Hey guys, Juice here, host of all the battle reports here at the Long War. Big shout out and special thanks to all the Long War vets. If you haven't subscribed already, please go to longwar.net and become a veteran of the Long War today. The Beats Laboratory is in full effect with two special guests, big heavyweights of the 40K community, Austin, a dog from VA. What's up? And Kelsey Haley, best 40K player in the history of 40K ever. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Here they are. We've got some super hard-hitting, powerful lists today. Over here on my side, I'm going to have a little bit of Titan action going on. And Adolf? And I've got the classic Thunderwolf throwdown with some Dark Angels in there for some support. Got the Space Wolves out today with the Dark Angels in there. Death Star on Death Star. Can't wait to see it. All right, awesome. Break it down for us from right to left. Let us know what you're playing today. You are looking at the Company of the Great Wolf. You've seen it a lot. I am taking it with four battle leaders. All have Power Fist and Storm Shields on Thunder Wolves. Uh, they have eight Fenrisian Wolves with them. Um, the two mandatory Iron Priests uh, with their Thunder Hammers on their Thunder Wolves also have eight Cyber Wolves with them. Um, going to the Dark Angels ally, we have a Chaplain with a Power Fist on a bike. We've got a full Ravenwing Command Squad with a Pop Carry and the company standard for that auto hit and run. Um, five guys, we've got the, the plasma guns um, and one unit of scouts as our tax there. Yeah, so I want you to know we've seen Death Stars. I played against Death Stars. This is the ultimate one unit army I've ever seen. Thank you, I can't wait to get on the table. Hell yeah, let's see what happens. Hey, it's Kelsey here bringing you the new Orquisition with, uh, that you've all been waiting to see from the Wobbly Mile Oh my god. I am so excited to, to break down this army right now with you, Kelsey. I can't even describe. So, from back, so we can talk about this, moving on to the Titans, let us know what, what you're playing with. So over here we got uh, five scouts with nothing, led by Tigerius, or in this army, Tiggy Smalls. <laughs> Yo, Tiggy Smalls, for everybody at home, so while they're watching, they know what's going on, is uh, break down this model for us real quick. We usually don't do this. We don't take this much time, but you have taken, this is bringing the hobby back, guys. This is what we preach about. This is what we talk about. Um, you've got models that you've liked, this or this, you know, and you've completely converted everything in this army. So talk about uh, Tiggy Smalls and what you use to uh, make this model. Uh, Tiggy Smalls is a... Uh... I believe it came out of the Knob Bikers. Okay. Uh, the little dude that's holding up, riding on the back, and then he's got some scrolls from the librarian kits and a fat chair of. Absolutely love it. Okay. So moving on from Tiggy Smalls and your scouts, uh, now uh, we've got three Night Titans. Right, Break it down and let us know what we got. So this is the uh, the Trapar Tight Lance. Okay. Uh, they can. It's a unit consisting of a Crusader, a Gallant, and a Warden. Okay. All of perfect. All of them are equipped with the, uh, the crack missile launcher. Absolutely. So you got three crack missile launchers each, and then you've got uh, on the Crusader here. You've got the battle cannon. It's a melta cannon. Oh, melta cannon. Okay, perfect. And what else? A Gatling gun. And that profile is twelve shot strength six AP three. Rending. Rending. Absolutely love it. Uh, and then now the warden here has the same gun, right? Correct. Okay. And both of them, both those guns, also have heavy flamers. Absolutely. Okay. And then so now the guy up front is the um, Gallant and he's the, the more of the close combat guy. Right. All okay. he's got is a heavy stubber, crank missile launcher, and two D weapons. Okay. Good. God. So <laughs> this is one unit and I know again we, we're spending a little bit more time but I want to make sure everybody knows what does this formation do for you? So the perks that this formation provides is each Titan brings some to the table. Okay. So you have the Crusader that it has twin link blasts. Each one links to the whole unit's blasts. Oh, then God. you have the Gallant that gives each Night Titan D3 impact hits. And then the best one, the Warden, makes the entire unit shooting attacks at minus one cover. So in this unit, the entire unit that can split fire all weapons, it can do all things, it's twin link blast templates, it's minus one to the cover save of your opponent, it is D3 hammer or ass, it is absolutely, this is a Death Star within itself, and I am so excited to, to see this play out. Real quick, give us a breakdown. Drop Pod is for? The Drop Pod is for Tigerius and the Scouts to ride in so that they cannot be killed. Love it. the first turn. Absolutely love it. Well, I can't wait to see how this game plays out.
So now that you guys and everybody at home, we know what you guys are going to be playing against, let's talk about it. What's going to happen? Oh, I think I think the big struggle is going to be uh, dictating close combat when it happens. Yeah, key word in that statement is dick. I know there's some stomps going on, and uh, they might come into play here, okay? Well, like you said, uh, we both are fast-moving uh, Death Stars. We both uh, have some potential um, in combat. Uh, I'm really worried about his shooting. He has, I, I have zero shooting uh, that's going to take place, basically. Um, he has all the firepower. Yo, I, I would like to uh, go in on this just a little bit further because that's a, that is such a true point here. You look at night times and maybe potentially wouldn't think that it's going to be the firepower that's going to come out of these, but uh, there is a lot of hidden, hidden firepower within these. I'll tell you, we joke, but if, if you've seen Kelsey or anybody playing this type of list play like a Gladius, uh, it's, it's a joke. Uh, they can kill a lot of things very fast. All right, Austin, so you've got to see where Kelsey is deployed. So let's talk about uh, your deployment because I know it's super crucial. Pretty standard setup. You might notice that the bikes are touching the battle leaders because they have that awesome Raven Wing, you know, jinx saves. Okay. Uh, Kelsey's got some answers for that. But I chose to go here in the center of the table to maybe grab the relic early and try to hold on to it. But we're, we're going to meet here in the middle of the table here in a second, and it's going to be a smackdown regardless. So we'll see how it goes. So this is a big role that I always love doing. I love trying to seize out people. So this is uh, the stage of the game that we're at. Um, Austin, you're up, man. All right, like to seize the initiative here. And you did, that is not a six, just so everybody knows at home. <laughs> but so you did opt not to scout. I'm close enough, we're gonna meet anyway. I don't feel like I needed to, so I wouldn't be able to get a turn one charge regardless. So we're looking for a turn two combat somewhere, hopefully. Gotcha, so you were just happy with the seize. So uh, Kelsey, you're up, dog. Alright. Top of one. Kelsey, okay, so let's break down real quick what you think uh, turn one's gonna do for you. Well, unfortunately, Juice, it is it is a night fight, so it's gonna be pretty hard to break through the, uh, the Raven Wing even with a minus one cover. So I'm probably gonna just sit back and shoot, see, see how that does this turn. I like it. I know everybody at home is super pumped for this first shooting phase to see what actual kind of firepower you can put down, Kelsey. So let it begin. All right, so first up, we're going to start off with the little toys. We're going to start off with the heavy stubbers. Gotcha. So there's four heavy stubbers in the unit. They're going to go everything that's targeting the one unit that Austin has on the table. So here we go. By the way. Fantastic. Forever and ever. <laughs> Three is to hit. They're all ballistic skill four. Press Twin link because prescience did go off. Jordy Tubbins is five. Five's to wound. Looking like how many we got there. Five saves. I got this. All right, we are going to look out, serve these. We're awesome. He's got to take one to two up armor. He's good. One at a time, so three up and roll. Good. Three up. Three up. Free rollable. Feel no pain. Dead bike. Two of armor. Good. Next gun. All right, so next up, we got the thermal cannon. We're going to be placing that blast right here. I got you, homie. Six hits. You get six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We always advocate getting your opponent involved. The hit. Smack. Dab in the middle. Two's to wound. Five wounds, Tommy. Five, five invulnerables. I'm kind of missing my bike already there. Didn't think he would die to stubbers. But we're going to start taking these one at a time on the battle leader that's closest. These are three up invul saves for the storm shield. So far, so good. I heard when you roll. Oh, well, there's one. Says, so feel no pain. He's going to take a wound. We've got two left. Last one. So he's still going to take a wound from that thermal can. Pretty solid. Next weapon profile, Kelsey. What is it? All right, so next up we got the uh, the Gatling guns. Ooh, these guns are close to my heart because I love flying hive giants. So I shoot 12 straight six shots, except you get rending. Don't forget negative one cover. <laughs> Proven effectiveness for squires. <laughs> love it. So here we go. 24 shots total, 83s. Impression. Pretty solid. Two misses. 
I've pulled that maneuver before once or twice. I just want you to know. <laughs> I love it. Now we're looking for threes and sixes are in. See a good sack of ones there. Followed by some sixes. Solid roll. So Kelsey just wants me to take these armor saves first. We've got a handful here to take. Uh, we are going to take them one at a time on our battle leader up front. These are two up saves. We'll bang these out real quick. There's a one. Feel no pain. Good. Stuck it. A couple more left. Is he a beast? Feel no pain. All right, so he's going to feel that last wound there. He's going to give him one wound left. That leaves us with four storm shield saves. Man, here we go. Three up. Three up. I'm not going to call that a leaner. Feel no pain. He's gonna die. That leaves me with two left. The other battle leader is now the closest model. We're gonna look out, sir, to a three up. Look out, sir. He's gotta take it, three up on himself. Fails, feel no pain, he is good. All right, so believe it or not, Titan unit's still not done. Now we gotta move on to these nine crack missiles. So here we go, threes to hit. Like a boss. Oh. That is a prescience. You did miss with one. Still pretty good. These dice will be available soon. Yep, in multiple different colors. Make sure you check out Seems our Kickstarter. Six saves. I got this. I got this. We're going to look out, sir, one at a time. Look out, sir. Good. It's going to be a three up jinx save. Look out, sir. A three up jinx save. Look out, sir. Three up jinx save. Look out, sir, to a three up jinx save. Look out, sir. I'll stop talking. That's a failed jinx save. He, they re-roll it because of their awesomeness. He's good. The last one is the lookout serve. The save. And real quick, I just want to make sure everybody at home realizes they're like, oh, this lookout serve shenanigans. It takes so long. You know, it slows the game down. That right there did not slow the game down at all. Toys, you toys. knew exactly what you were doing. You know what I mean? And uh, you moved very quick. So we just want to make sure there's a lot of trolls out there. Uh, we just proved that you literally just made seven or eight, nine saves including lookout serves plus re-rolls in less than 15, 20 seconds. And I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna follow that up I'm saying that I'm done shooting. Kelsey, into your turn one, how do you feel about uh, the shooting phase so far? Well, honestly, with, with it being night fly juice, I was I was actually expecting to not not really do a whole lot. So when uh, when they killed one, killed a battle leader, I was actually pleasantly surprised. A battle leader and a dark angel. Yeah, so it was actually pretty good. Next turn will be better. Bottom of one, you have you got some making up to do and some ground to cover. How do you feel about it? I feel pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bum rush this relic here. Uh, try to maybe sneak it out the back, but I don't know. We're, we're gonna get in combat here shortly, so I have to survive another another round of shooting and, and take probably take a charge. So we'll see how it goes. So we got your midstream here in your movement phase because I know this is how clutch this this phase is for you. So um, let's let's keep going with it. And I see your Wolfgar battle leader number. We're gonna call him number two. <laughs> number two has picked up the relic. Now I know uh, we're gonna talk about it a little bit later, but uh, you wanna try to pass off and do some things. So, but this is because of the the firepower is in there because uh, you know this unit does only one thing that is punch these these night titans in the face. This phase, you have to make sure you line up for your lookout sirs and everything else. Hey man, I have to keep these bikes close to the battle leader so I can try to get that jinx save for one more turn. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start losing some guys here for sure because I don't have that night fight bonus. But um, as you see, I'm on the relic, so maybe I could pass it off and try to escape with a bike I do have, hit and run in the unit. So there might be something I can try to do later down the line to escape the Titan's wrath. All right, the shooting phase. Uh, I jinked. I'm not going to shoot any plasma talons at the Titans, obviously, uh, you know, for those deathly reasons. But I am going to run and turbo boost some bikes. Um, everybody except the guy that has picked up the relic. So here's my run move for the dogs and everybody. One inch. Somebody here called and I'm upset. Seems good. Love it. So bottom of one. Um, you know, it was basically what you thought it would be. A bunch of movement. That's all. I mean, that's all you can do. Um, I do have the relic. Um, I am in position for him to charge me. Um, he's got the upper hand here because he gets to, you know, maneuver his knights um, through the terrain and possibly charge me on a flank. So everybody can't swing on my end. So 
we're about to get hit here in a second. Top of two. So I feel like there might have been a little bit of foreshadowing going on right there, Kelsey. Um, let's talk about it. Well, so uh, what's going to happen this turn is uh, exactly what Austin just said. I'm going to maneuver to the side. I'm going to shoot him with everything I have. I'm going to charge, and I'm going to cast Invisibility on the Night Titans. Turn two, Psychic Phase. All right, Kelsey. Big, big point here. Here we go. See how many power dice we get. Three. Three, okay. A little more than you wanted. It is. I would have preferred a one so that if I cast Invisibility, he couldn't stop it. So here we go. I'm just going to use all dice to cast Invisibility. Uh, it fails to cast, but it's Tigerius. He's got some stupid item. Wait. Yep. That, that's, that was my leaner. So you get to reroll that too. Got it. It was off two. one two. I have three dice to try to roll two sixes. Long or help me. It goes off. My gosh, we are in the, the salt phase, but real quick, Kelsey, talk about it, shooting phase. So I lit him up, everything I had, the, uh, the Dark Angel's bike proved his uh, his annoying habits by taking all of it in stride and not taking a wound. Sometimes, Sometimes it help, uh, to help him from feeling a pain in his battle leader buddy. Oh, no doubt. Sometimes you don't fail four for rollable coverage. L literally no wounds. So now, this is you got the full girth of this unit going into the assault phase. Let's see what happens. All right, so I've declared the charge with the Night Titans, and Austin has decided not to overwatch because he doesn't, he doesn't want to lose models. I'm scared. I don't want to lose any bikes. So we're just gonna get right to it, and here we go. Four inches, it's plenty. All right, so one of the benefits of having the gallon in the unit is D3 impact hits. I have one model that made base, so it's D3. It's gonna be two impact hits, the twos to wound, one wound. All right, we're gonna look out, sir, that strength 10 there, just to his little crappy dog. Uh, he's going to take his save, it'd be great. Fantastic. We're gonna go ahead and make the attacks now. This unit, the Gallant, gets five D weapon attacks, and the uh, the other dude with the D weapon gets four on the charge. So we're gonna go ahead and make the attacks. Weapon skill four. We're gonna go ahead and do the initiative uh, four pile in moves. Now they can't hurt you, but they, they are gonna pile in first. So they're gonna get their three inch move. So we'll go ahead and move these guys up. So guys, I do believe the bikes are strength five rending and they are initiative as well so they might actually get to swing and hurt you if they can shoot the gap through the battle leaders. so i actually completed my pile and moves there and my bikes have the corvus hammers so they have strength five rending they're gonna swing first you are invisible um two hits we have a chaplain which gives us that zealot that uh re-rolled a hit in the first round of combat it's gonna be three hits i hope the, I hope the dogs do that strength five rending Front armor 13 on a walker. So anything but a one or two on this uh, plus D3 for the rending. That's gonna be a pin. So I'll take a whole point. A whole point on Jeff there in the front. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the Night Titans initiative uh, four attacks. So I'll be framed right there. So I got five attacks from the gallant. Four attacks from the other dudes. Here we go. Force to hit. We got four hits there. Strength D. Uh, six in there. So somebody's dead, and then somebody else is probably also dead. All right. So the, obviously, the guy that's dead is going to be this little Fenrisian in base. And we're going to take this instant death save, three up on the battle leader. He's going to die a miserable death. So the big titan, who we've affectionately dubbed King Big Nuts, is the warlord, and his night titan warlord trait allows him to reroll to hit on a turn in which he successfully completes the charge. Which he did. So. Here, we'll hit, here are his attacks, and he forced to hit. Good thing you re-roll, I hate you. Two hits. Roll some ones, baby. Roll some ones. Yeah. That's Killed the one dude in base to base, so there would be no more in base to base contact. That's it. That actually prevents an Iron Priest from swinging. Which is actually huge at this point, because Titans don't like AP1. So after the initiative one pile in, I have two battle leaders uh, able to swing on Jeff there in the front. The Iron Priest over here was not able to make it since Kelsey killed that uh, dog in contact. But we have 10 attacks over there. His Titans are invisible. I did not roll a 6. I have Hatred. Or should be Zealot. Reroll re a hit. Give me some 6s. Give me 2 6s. 
These are strength 10 and power fist attacks. Uh, that's a big tickle. Wow. Wow. No strength 10 power fist did anything. I suck. Man. <laughs> so you know what that means. It's stomp time, baby. He's not going to do anything. Feel stomp time. Let's He's see what happens. He's a tap dance. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kick off uh, Jeff stomps. He's going to go ahead and get D3 stomps. He's going to get one. I'm going to place it right here so I get a little dog, the bike, and a battle leader. Roll a one. He's going to do three strength six hits. Need threes to wound. Two saves. AP4, uh, my battle leader is not in base, so it's a bike. Um, not a carrier, so three up. That's a uh, feel no pain on the bike. He's a dead bike. And a two up on the battle leader. Good. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the Warlord Stomps. He's going to go ahead and get D3 Stomps. He's going to get three Stomps. The first Stomp is going to be right here. He's going to remove those two dogs. Well, that's inconvenient. Better than the Iron Priest. On to his second Stomp here. I'm going to go ahead and place it. We talked about it. He wants it here in the middle. Um, that's going to clip two guys there, Kelsey. And that's one of those things that we talk about here at the Long War. Always get your opponent involved. So we want to make sure that the opponent agrees with the result, and he does getting those two things. Kelsey, let's see what happens. All right, so it's going to be two strength six hits, uh, two wounds, two saves for that Iron Priest. Iron Priest take two up saves, watch him die because he hates himself. No, he's good. <laughs> and then we go. I got that third stomp. Gonna go right in the same place. And here we go. Let's see what it does. Gonna do two more strength six, two wounds, and snake eyes here. Two ups. And that'll be it for the combat. Unless the other dude can somehow roll D3 on his stomps. Nope. He did not. It doesn't look like he's gonna be able to do anything. So, Kelsey, that was uh, your turn too. Um, let's talk about it and break it down. All right, so uh, while the shooting was ineffective, the charge in the close combat was actually pretty good. It, not the most things died, but I was able to take out a battle leader and a bike. So it's a step in the right direction, especially since in response, I, I took no damage. And now he's gonna go kill the source of the invisibility, which is kind of a big deal, but at this point in the game, it's not totally crucial. So now, Austin, it's your turn, too. Um, are you going to track down that Tiggy Smalls, as Austin or as Kelsey was kind of talking about? Or uh, what are you thinking? Well, I, as you guys can see, I have a, the auto hit and run banner. That's why I was able to hop out of that combat. And now it puts me in an awkward position. I had to drop the relic because I moved too far. I moved 18 inches uh, on that yeah. hit and run. So the relic is back here kind of with Kelsey. So I'm torn with killing invisibility and maybe trying to survive some shooting and then charging him when he's not invisible. I or, feel like that sounds like a solid plan to me. Or, you know, this is, my soul just wants to just nut up and charge him. That's right. That's so, right. Ball is deep. So we'll, we'll find out here in a minute. Regardless of what uh, profanities are coming out of Mr. Haley's mouth, I decided against charging his Titans. And th the reason being, um, I was going to be unable to uh, charge like on the flank of the Titans, so all three of his Titans were going to be able to swing and stomp. Um, obviously, the Lance is a unit and they have specific benefits um, that allow them to do that. So, I decided to come over and kill what I know I can, prevent him from being invisible. So, we're on to the assault phase now. So, I loved how fast this turn was. Um, basically, the swarm was here it is, and now assault phase. Yep, you so made the nine inch, you rolled a nine, rolled nine, needed literally like two. Yep. And now it looks like some impact hits. Yeah, we got three hammer wraths from our big dogs here. The overwatch was ineffective, so ineffective, so now it's just uh, some armor saves from those two. Go take one of the scouts, because let's face it, no one likes scouts. And one of them is explodes. Because you go ahead and uh, get those um, scout attacks in, it's up to you. All right, so here we go. Uh, and now this is. Generally speaking, a pretty hopeless combat for poor Tigerius and his scout friends. So I'm going to go ahead and make Tigerius' attacks. Uh, your average weapon skill is a four, so we'll be needing threes. He hits twice. Tigerius ranks six, so he needs threes. So one save for you. Two of them. That'll be lovely. And then some scouts are going to throw sticks or whatever it is the scouts do. <laughs> These are the best scouts ever. See? Oh, that's what I told you. Big stick. All right. So we got some guys. We're taking on a battle leader here in the middle. He's going to get a feel no pain. 
and love it. And then, uh, in the interest of saving time, because we all know how this is going to work out, I'm just going to pick more. This is exactly one of those things we talk about here at the Long War. Let's be real. You know what I mean? Like, if you're that guy who wants to roll out what happens when a 1250 point unit comes to Tigerius and Five Scouts, you're a troll. So you're able to pick up some kill points there and something happened. Awesome. Talk about it. Obviously, we, we wiped the unit. Uh, they brought up a good point, speeding up time. Uh, I was able to get a pretty good consolidation roll there to reposition my unit so my bikes could you know, be in better position to look out, sir. Um, we're about to get a lot of fire by here. Um, it's not going to be invisible anymore. I'm not sure if it really matters, but um, we're going to find out. Fight over the relic here, last couple turns. I feel like this might be uh, the showdown, showgun turn. So turn three, and the stare down continues. All right. So what I got planned uh, now. Through, uh, through the heroic sacrifice of truly meaningless scouts, I can now move towards the relic and secure another round of shooting before we re-engage in melee. So what I've done here is I've moved back down the street towards the relic and I've made sure that I'm completely out of a charge range even if Austin rolls boxcars. So after a shortened psychic phase, we're gonna go ahead and move on to shooting phase. We're gonna start off with this uh, thermal cannon. Pretty much like, a Consistent six hits. Um, I'm not really spreading out too much for it. So we're gonna go ahead and roll it. Here we go. It's gonna be a direct hit. That's three for three there, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's one of the one of the great things about the lance. All blast weapons are twin linked. We need twos to wound. All right. So the cyberwolf couldn't quite get out of that, so he's up front. So uh, cyberwolves are actually characters. So he's gonna look out and start his battle leader on four up. He is going to take it and die like a peasant. Feel no pain. Feel no pain because he is tough as spot. He's a beast. All right, let's keep this up. Look out, turn four up. Failed it. Feel no pain. Now he's dead. Now he's a peasant. Before now, he was a beast. That leaves us with three, three more. Uh, we're gonna look out, sir, from the battle leader. Uh, we're jinking, obviously. Uh, so this goes to a cover save, reroll, and a feel no pain on the banner. There's a dead banner. Two more. Uh, it's a lookout sort of chaplain, so we're just going to take it on ourselves. Three ups. Good. Alright, so next up we're going to go ahead and fire those heavy stubbers. Twelve shots, need threes to hit. Solid roll. Certainly rolled worse. Again, these dice are available soon. Fives to wound. One. <laughs> well, I can take that real quick. Two up. Love it. We're going to go ahead and shoot crack missiles at the unit. Need threes. Four misses. I love when you're not precious. Yeah, it's a little better for you. Two's to wound. Only three that time. All right, these are AP3, so two up armors on the battle leader. He's good to go. All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and fire the Gatling cannon. Looking for threes and 24 shots. Mm. It's not, not terrible. Then we're looking for threes and sixes. Couple sixes, three sixes. Three sixes and three rins and seven armor. It's pretty easy because I do not want my chaplain to die because I feel like I need him in combat. So we're just going to go and take all three of these rendings on the battle leader. These are three ups. It's two fail. Then we got feeling of pains for these. So we're going to take two wounds from that. That's pretty big. Now that leaves us with armor saves. We're at one at a time. Two ups. These dice are for sale. <laughs> All right, feel no pain, don't kill me. All right, he's dead. We're gonna look out, sir. Oh, actually it's a battle leader, so two up. All right, we're good. Kelsey, that's another solid turn of shooting. Yeah, I'm um, really actually happy with the way that turned out. Got another one down. So right now we actually have an even ratio of Night Titans to Thunder Wolves. So, something definitely we're forward to because he's gotta to come to me to get the relic. Turn three. Austin, where are we at, dog? I feel like we've lived through the apocalypse, buddy. Like that last turn uh, drives me to drink, and that's why I drink when I play. Um, I'm too far away to get a charge, so it's an, I'm gonna have to endure another stressful turn of, of getting shot up. Um, I'm losing guys here, so um, every model counts from here on out. Real short turn here. Um, 
we're moving obviously we've got the 12 inch but we're going to go ahead and add our run move um to this opponent approved what damn they suck one inch it's not what i wanted kelsey but you're speaking to my dice and i don't like it you do this all the time you and fate weaver too I hate it <laughs> All right, 13 inches. Not as close as I'd like to be, but we're getting there. Kelsey said it. Down to only three Thunderwolves. Got my battle leader up front. Position the, uh, the lookout sir shenanigans kind of with the, uh, the Ravenwing bike there. Try to, we've got to keep, you know, weathering the storm here. Um, Hopefully he doesn't roll well on his movement so he can't keep running away, but I have a feeling we're going to have a showdown here at the Relic, so waiting for it. All right, so we're at the, at the top of turn four, and now I have to decide whether I want to move forward and engage them on my terms or whether I want to continue to run and kind of yield the Relic a little bit. It is turn four, so I would have turn five to come and take it again. But now you're only gonna be able to move six inches. Do you feel like you can actually get away from it? Well, I will, uh, I probably can if I, you know, move 12 inches. So yeah, so you can move 12 inches and I forgot for a second that you can't pick up the relic. So you are actually just moving away from it, in, uh, period. Right, yeah, I, I was actually thought that you meant, uh, as per the old rules when the Night Titans could only move six through terrain. Correct, gotcha. So we're gonna start off with the thermal cannon. Placing it right there. You get five hits if, no it's, a, way. if it's a hit. Uh, cock dice. So I'm going to go ahead and use the twin link and re roll them, all of it. And it's going to go two inches. Probably still at four. Get four guys. All right. Uh, it'll be three wounds. Three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and look out. So we're jinking. We're going to look out, sir, to a cover save. Good, look out, sir. Cover, look out, sir. Cover. The re roll cover. Man, feel no pain. You're good. Next gun. Next up, we're going to go ahead and go to the heavy stubbers. Got three misses. The stubbers. I love to hit. Looking for fives and sixes. One. Two of armor. We're gonna move right along into the crack missiles. Three misses. Two to wound. Three at a time. Two ups. Come here. Two ups. Feeling no pain? Uh, battle leader took a wound. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and fire the two Gatling guns into this unit. You got the definition of leaner there. Three solid. Threes and sixes. Three sixes. Preferably six. No way. Sixes are good. Was that one six? So we got one rend. And that many armor saves. A plethora of armor. Armor first. He's got two left, so two at a time. Two ups. Feeling the pain. Man, they hate me. He's got one left. So um, we're going to go ahead and take our two, one at a time. Two up. Kelsey called that he's going to die, but I don't know. You still think he's going to die, Kelsey? Sure do. Oh, solid. Oh, he's good. He's good. The almighty rending. We're gonna look out, sir. That look out, sir. He's gotta take it. He lost. He's got a field of pain. He's alive. Oh. He's alive. <laughs> Another shooting phase down. Another shooting phase quasi successful. Talk about it. It was. Yeah, it was all right. Um, I would have preferred that guy die. You know, clearly. But him having one wound left, he might as well have full wounds because once we get into combat, it's all for nothing. Wait a second. Is it time? It is time. Is it that time? It is that time. The, the real throwdown. He's not invisible. 
everybody's gonna make it, so we're gonna finally get to see. You still got the chaplain. You still have on the upwards of 15 strength 10 tacks. This is what everybody at home, all our vets, been waiting for this turn right here. This is it. Let's do it. So my mandatory scout unit finally decides to come in turn four. They went and they're hanging out with Kelsey's pod that I, you know, dropped in the corner. They're uh, early in the game. We've moved, we've shot and did nothing with our two remaining bikes with uh, the Twin Link Plasma Towns. Um, we're on to the assault phase. See how far we get to move. Going in five. We do not have fleet because of the bike, so we gotta stick with that. Made my charge there. Uh, we got his Titans and my uh, couple bikes there. Our initiative four. I'm gonna, I'd like to go ahead and roll on first. Go ahead. All right, fours. The chaplain in the unit gives us that zealot. And we're uh, strength five or rending. Nothing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and roll my seven D weapon attacks. Looking for fours. Four hits. And two saves. Two. We're going to elect to go ahead and just kill the two dogs in base contact, the small uh, cyborgs. All right. And then we have three strength 10 AB2 attacks from the big man. man. One hit, one dead dog. That's another dead cyborg. Kelsey's taller than me, fellas, so he's pulling my models for me. Appreciate that. No worries. Now on to the, the stuff that matters, um, the strength 10 stuff. We're going to separate these. We've got 10 attacks for the Iron Priest. These are AP1. We're going to use the, the servo arms there. We need fours to hit you. The chaplain's going to give us the reroller hit. That's oh my super gosh. solid turn there. Very <laughs> solid. All right, strength 10. <gasps> Holy shit. Yeah, shit! <laughs> that is appropriate word for uh, that terminology. All right, uh, that is a uh, glance, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins. Dear Lord! Well, damn it, Cotton, that was a bold move, son. Dude, I I, I can't remember a time that they've done that well, but let's see what the pin results are. Right? These are AP one, so five. So that's going to be three explode results on top of that. Let's do some math here, Kelvin. So, so like, far you've done six, so now you do 3d3. Three three. Six plus 3d3. Three three. That's uh, three, four, five, six more. So two Titans are down and one spills over. All right, so that's gonna take out two of his his big toys. Now, just so everybody at home knows, uh, he's still gonna get his stops. This is all I want. So we have, I also have my, my battle leader to swing. He's a uh, weapon skill five. Uh, chaplain with the reroll. It's gonna be four hits. These are also strength ten. Not as good. Uh, that's a pen. What's the pen gonna do? Uh, just plus one. So this is another whole point. So he's got two on him. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the initiative one stomps. See if these guys can take somebody out in their death throes prior to exploding. So first we're gonna start with the big man here. He's gonna get D three. He's gonna get two stomps. First one being a bike and a, an iron priest. He's gonna do two hits. Nothing. And the second stomp. Whoosh! There, there they go. Whoosh! So following the rules for stomp, after the first template is placed, the second template can be placed anywhere within three inches. So I elected to place the second template here, and the sixth result results in these three bikes and the Iron Priest being removed from play. So now, Jeff here is gonna get D3 stomps. He's gonna get two stomps. Don't do it to me, Jeff. The first stomp's gonna be right on this battle leader's head. No, Jeff. He's gonna do one wound, make a save and kill him because he's got one left. <coughs> Look out, sir. To a, that's a Fenrisian. And the apothecary died because you stopped him. Was he still be alive because of this he same? He would be, but that would be your feeling of pain because it's you don't get pain. an armor save. Oh wow! Well, if he's dead, he's a good call, man. I like that. Teamwork. So the second stomp from Jeff. No, Jeff. We're gonna straddle the two and go go for the glory. Jeff hates them. Not that bad, apparently. Oh, God, I'm telling you, no, Jeff. No. One more. 
One. Look out, sir. Who do you think is close to that, brother? I don't know. Uh, whoever you want. Iron Breeze. There you go. So now we got D3 stomps from the big man. Gonna get one stomp. Gonna put it on the battle leader. Here's the stomp on the battle leader. He'll get it. Yeah. Oh, the dice never lie. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and see how these dudes want to die. Do they want to fall forward and be my heroes, or do they want to fall next to themselves and suck? So we're gonna start off with him. Where do you want to go, big man? He wants to stay in place. So that's fine. That's fine. What type of explosion is it? It's gonna be a big one. No, it's not. It's a small one. So after measuring out to the first explosion here, two of them are gonna be hit with strength eight, and two of them are gonna be hit with strength four. So we go ahead and roll that real quick. Two strength eight, twos. So there's two there. Two, that's going to be closest, so... So it'll vaporize two dogs. All right, so the two dogs will die there. And then two strength fours are going to need fives to move. Oh. Cleaner. Cleaner. One. One, and that's AP five, so we will... Oh, that's so ball. Well, look out, sir. And we're going to pass, and it goes to that Iron Priest. So now we're going to see what happens to Jeff. If Jeff does me right, he'll go that way. Take some stuff with him. Jeff is going the correct direction, away from me. I see a six inch scatter. Uh, what type of explosion is it? Uh, I'm thinking this one's gonna be a big one. It is a large explosion, so we'll measure this out and measure from that uh, six inch. Point. So we're gonna go ahead and go six inches. All right, that's where the D is gonna land. And then we're gonna measure 2.5 from there and then another 2.5 for the third layer of the explosion. 2.5 will catch the battle leader. And then another 2.5 will catch nobody. All right, so that's gonna be strength 10. This is for the battle leader. He's wounded. As for the main rule book, it's only AP3. So we're gonna look out, sir, this. I just don't want him to die. Look out, sir. And uh, the Iron Priest gonna die. <laughs> Two upset. He's good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Big old two Titans down. So I'm gonna go ahead and file in, so he can get off this train. Black, where your head's at? I do too. I'll pile in just to hang out with you. How about that? Sounds good. Man, wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a turn. How do you feel about it? Man, Talk about it. Let's go. Holy crap, man. Y'all wanted to see it. That was it. Right, Kelsey? We've, yeah, we've done this about many, as good as it gets. We've done it many times. Um, that's a throwdown. So, you know, one wound battle leader left, an Iron Priest, a couple little dogs. He's only got two wounds on him. Uh, we're still holding it down on the relic. We got some scouts, you know, slapping a pod, uh, doing nothing. This, but, um, this, this is the turn. This is, this is turn, going into turn five now? Yep. If, so, if you don't dip, dodge, dip, or dodge, you're done. Well, there's no hit and run. He killed all the bikes. Uh, we're just we're stuck in here. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't roll sixes with his stops. That's all I got, man. Turn five, Kelsey. We're here. We're at the short end of the straw has been drawn, dog. <laughs> Where are we at? Talk about it. All right, so what I got to do now and it's basically, I need to roll one of those sixes, and I need to remove both those characters. We're probably going to kill each other. And if I do well enough on the stomps and the ensuing explosion of that Night Titan, I might just take everybody with him. And then, by virtue of First Blood and Line Breaker, I can take this one. It's so close. The scouts actually matter. <laughs> this is the proverbial going balls deep. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right, so little did either of us know, that this mess was gonna matter, but now I'm gonna be shooting this drop out of these scouts, see if I can make them break and run off the board. One hit, need a four, one a wound. Six. All right. That's a dead Got scout. him. Apparently uh, the crack grenade I threw last turn made you mad. <laughs> so one of the benefits of being reduced to two miles is the turns are quick. We're already into the assault phase. So I'm gonna go ahead and make his three attacks, strength 10, looking for fours. Two hits, looking for twos. There's two. Well, that's a dead Fenrisian and a dead Cyberwolf. Terrific. As any friendly competition, uh, Kelsey has doomed my dice. Uh, <laughs> Curse them off camera. 
He does not want this Iron Priest to hit on fours. That is three hits. All right, these are strength 10, AP1. That's a glance and a pin. What does the pin do? Blow up! No, yes. that's just two. So he's got two, two left. Two left, gotcha. Two left, and we got the battle leader coming up. Weapon skill five on the battle leader. He is a turd. Yes. Kelsey's Look, really excited right gotta now. Gotta have a oh. pin right here. Gotta have yeah, a pin right gotta here. Have awesome. Gotta have it. <laughs> yes. Nothing. All right, so that's what we call a whiff. Uh, the doom has struck. Thank you, Kelsey. You're very welcome. So now we're uh, into the initiative one stomps. So the big man's gonna get D3 stomps. Three stomps. I'll do that again. The first stomp is gonna hit both of them. The two guys I need gone. It's gonna do two wounds. Iron Priest, stud. All right. This means just bring this up. This is the most nerve-wracking. Dude, this, this, this has been game. absolutely crucial stops right here. Love it. Nervous. I'm telling you, stops make so, me nervous. So here, here it comes. Don't do it. Stop. Second just, one. Just roll it. You're playing with me. Ooh. One more save. Iron Priest. Good. Last one. Just don't roll six, and we'll just hang out for another time. Right? Here we go. Killing blow. Oh, no. Twos, yes. Three twos. Yes. That's two more, right? Yeah. All right, so two more Iron Priest. Watch this. We'll probably die anyway. No, we're good. Clutch. How did it happen? So we're stuck in. Stuck in. I'll pile in here. And, and it's important to note that the three inch pile in will not bring the little doggies in. All right, so here we are at uh, the bottom of five. So Austin's turn. The only thing he's really got to do is try and kill my pod and try and kill my Titan. Here we go. It's not necessarily what Kelsey said, because all you honestly have to do is do one or the other. How do you feel about it? Talk about it. There's only one thing I'm doing here, and it's killing that <laughs> king, big nuts in the middle of the table. Now, as you can see, Kelsey allowed me to, we actually didn't pile in last turn. He allowed me to do that. So I am in base contact with those small dogs. So hopefully I can wipe him right now, you know, blow some magic up with dice, kill this guy, win this game. He's only got two left. Um, Kelsey's going at initiative four. Yep. Looking for three fours. Fours to hit. Two hits. Two. Shrink ten. Yep. It's me two. Uh, guess who died? Two, two doggies. Two little pups. Leaving my iron priest here. Be a beast. It's going to be two hits. Two pins. That'll do it. Uh, that's just gonna hold point you out. Yeah. Let's see the explosion, bro. Roll the scatter, see where we're at. Before we do that, let's do the stomps. So we're looking at D3 stomps. Three stomps. That's pretty good. Oh. So this is gonna be basic repeat, same spot. Hey, the speed up time and roll three dice because it doesn't matter regardless. He's just loading for a six. There it is. There it is. Oh. And uh, nothing's left but a pod. A couple scats. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Wow, turn five. Wow. Is there any other words? No. I, I have a few, but. I'll <laughs> <laughs> no, choose not to say that. My gosh. You can't even be mad you know, after something like that. I don't even know what to say. I mean, truly epic. One of the games for the books. I mean, you actually cannot get any closer than that. Tell me when a game has ever come down to, some people are like, oh, it came down to the last dice rolls. It came down <laughs> to the last spinning dice where you both removed each other's models. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, we've got the winner's models here, but the only actual winning model from the side is, is right here, right? <laughs> I mean, are, are we are we just kidding or what? No. So, but uh, let's talk about it. Let's break it down here. Um, what happened? I mean, Kelsey, we kind of forgot about the scouts. You know, they, they didn't come on until turn four. Turn four, that was that was pretty clutch. Like, uh, when I mean clutch, not good. Well, if they would have came on on turn two, I feel like through the t the course of the game, crack grenades would have just eventually come through. And I'll counter that because Kelsey will counter it by saying that one Titan would look at them and blow them off the table. 
All I'm gonna say is that just means that is less firepower coming down on your super unit. No so, you know, I feel like uh, that would have definitely changed the course of the game. You have we a good can't, point. Yeah, absolutely. We, absolutely. We cannot go back and worry about what happened. All we can do is look at the, the, the battlefield and talk about it. So, I mean, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Uh, Kelsey, very tactical. I. I personally know you, um, I know how you play, and I was kind of shocked to see how you, on turn three, I think it was, where you kind of stuttered step a little bit back instead of just bum rushing him forward. What a great tactical move to utilize your massive firepower that you have over Austin. Yeah, the firepower was really the game breaker in this. Uh, getting first blood was huge towards getting the victory, mm -hmm. and really just because of the immense amount of firepower they had was that that shooting phase is, is something to remember um, I'd like to take this time thank you for everybody that let me borrow your models Aaron Thompson great paint job on the wolves uh, Josh Kinder on the bikes and obviously Kelsey great job on your Titans above absolutely guys so um, even though just to give it a quick breakdown and you see the winners models and our winner circle that we have here uh, Kelsey was able to even though there wasn't very many models left he was able to get uh, first blood yeah. and line breaker where Austin was not able to pick up either one of those, so Kelsey was able to win uh, two to zero. Two to, excuse me, two to one. Yep. So, hey guys, let's shake it out. Great game. Great game, as always. Oh, we'll play again. Oh, I'm sure. Down. Hey, look, for <laughs> everything else that you see here and more, go check it out at longwar.net and become a veteran of the Long War today. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna make an executive decision. Get rid of that goddamn fucking sword. He does not have it. For you this. know what I mean? Like this is absolutely unbelievable. Because you've done a. Hey Juice, did you get a text message? That's not me. On me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.